the true story of Deathwing the Destroyer. So we've already established that Illidan is the biggest loser on Azeroth, but who is the biggest edgelord? That would be Deathwing. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. A long-ass time ago, Deathwing and the other dragon aspects pretty much had the exact same storyline as the very first How to Tame Your Dragon movie. Him and the other dragon aspects used to be a bunch of pussy tiny proto-drakes. Then they defeated a giant badass dragon monster named Galakrond who was way more interesting than any of them. And then the titans were all like, Whoa, dude, these dumb little drakes are kinda cool, man. Let's give them powers and stuff. Alexstrasu became the guardian of life, Sally Goose became the guardian of magic, I own every fucking card, Ysora fell asleep, and Darkwing became the guardian of the rocks. That's right, rocks. How interesting, Blizzard. Okay, so for pretty much 10 quadrillion years, Dreadwing flew around and made sure that dirt was dirt and that mountains weighed a lot. His job really didn't make any sense whatsoever, but one thing was certain. He hated it, and for good reason, too. While Alex Strazoop was having non-stop sex and making life and stuff, and Mally McDonald was playing with magic, and Yserop was taking naps all day, all he was allowed to do was chill out inside of caves and count the cracks in the walls. Hey man, I would hate that job too. So one day Derp Wang made an account on OkCupid looking for a lady as miserable as him, and he stumbled across a certain person's profile that had all the same fetishes that he did. I'll spare you all the details, but lots of tentacles. This profile belonged to someone called the Old Gods, and over Skype they started to talk about how cool Daniel Wing was, and how he wasn't being appreciated for the hot manly stud that he was. Doodlewing, agreeing that he was indeed very much awesome, started to listen to these old gods, and he began to silently plot against his fellow dragon friends. So skip forward a little bit and demons are attacking Azeroth, and Shadowwing has the great idea to make a magic golden dinner plate to fight the Legion. He proposes this idea to the rest of the dragons and tells them that in order to create the one dinner plate to rule them all, they would all need to dump their power into it to make it super strong and stuff. Now you might be thinking, why would the dragons pour their own power into this golden dinner plate of Deathwings? And you know, that is a great question. So the dragons do it and, oh no, they were tricked. It was all a trap set up by Deathfriend who stole their power, didn't put any of his own power into the plate, and then used the weapon against his dragon friends. Oh. So the other dragons cry and go home because their power was stolen, and Darkflight became so evil that day that he turned into a giant lava monster dragon. All seemed well for Doodle Derp and his plan of evil with his golden dinner plate of power. But suddenly, fucking Malfurion. Malfurion shows up, steals that dinner plate like a badass, tells Death Friend that he's an idiot, and then he leaves like the swag druid that he is. Dread Fly Guy is really pissed off by this, and he tries to get his dinner plate back, but he fails. The war ends, Malfurion saves the day because he's so fucking awesome, and for 10,000 years, Black Dragon Death Guy sits in his death layer of death and chats with the old gods about how his life is a dark abyss of hatred and darkness. He's so edgy. Skip ahead a couple thousand years and Blackwing figures out where the magic plate is. He manipulates a bunch of orcs to use it for him. They turn Alex Strazap into a BDSM dragon sex slave. And then Death Friend decides to hide his eggs in Outland because... Well, he doesn't want anybody making omelets. The Gron don't like that and they kill a ton of Dreadbay's kids, which makes him really angry. He kills some Gron, then he flies away. Then Dreadflight decides to take on the role of Lord Prester of Ultrak so he can bang some human women. Then he tries to turn the kingdoms of the north against Dalaran, which of course doesn't work. And ultimately Blackflight gives up and goes into hiding again to talk with the old gods about how his life is never-ending vortex of hatred and blackness and darkness and dark dark and, and stuff. Yeah. But at long last, years later, after thousands of years of planning, Deathwing finally unveils his master plan to destroy the world and to bring torment upon its people. After all these years, him and the old gods, their plan will finally be revealed. During the events of Cataclysm, he emerges from his hiding spot in Deep Home and... He lights a random zone on fire every now and then, and he gives players a stood-in-the-fire achievement. It's genius!
Oh, and he also brings back Ragnaros because Ragnaros is just really fucking cool, but then Malfurion beats him too. So as you can imagine, the world by this point is just tired of Danny Wing's whining and his constant complaining. And so, a massive talking green pickle uses the golden dinner plate of destiny to blow a giant hole in Dreadwing, makes him crash into the maelstrom, and then a handful of random heroes finally put an end to the Black Dragon and his obsession with tentacles. And, uh, that's pretty much it. 